Hi, Neil. Welcome to Bisto. It's my great pleasure having you. How are you? I'm very good, Max. Thank you very much for inviting me to talk to you today. Thanks for coming. So uh, let's start g- giving a bit of a background. Um, yes, well, I started up um, the design business, say, three years ago now, um, built on sort of... Um, sort of 20 plus years experience working for large agencies, consultings, you know, all, all the name that you, you would know. Um, what I wanted to do was bring the value of design to smaller, medium sized startup businesses, um, because I really see that the business value of design is so important nowadays. Obviously, with things like um, COVID and et cetera, that's changed our changed the way that customers interact with businesses and created a whole new world of different business opportunities. I think now is a wonderful time for innovating businesses, startups, etc., to really seize the opportunity to to move this forward because they have, they're agile, they can move, they can invest in a way that, say, the larger corporations would find it more difficult to do. So, that's that's my ambition with the design business um, to um, to help uh, those those types of companies move their ambitions forward. What do you mean when you say um, happy moving? How do you do that? How do you do it? Well, I guess when you're starting up a business, you've got a wonderful idea. You want to, you know, you have to, to invent something. You've got an idea for a new platform, a new piece of software. It's really important to have the customer's voice in that. You have to understand how your business is going to fit into their lives, how it is going to bring value, be that a B2C or a B2B business. And... What I can help businesses with from the kind of strategy perspective is really kind of say, well, what type of experience are you trying to create for your, for your new business? You know, what makes you different? What do you believe in? You know, we all started our own businesses for, for a reason. We all have passions. Then really trying to help them understand who their customers are, looking at what they could potentially achieve from the customer's perspective and building an understanding of that. There's, you know, a term of phrase that Every business meeting that you need to have has to have a com- has to have your customer pre- present. You know that whole idea of co-design, and I can help businesses really think about that and bring the customer to their their strategy and their design um, sort of process. Then you know I'm from a graphic design background. I I graduated into the dot com boom. I've been through all of those um, you know transitions of of digital where it went from being websites to being service design to you know getting involved in you know. Uh, multi-million pound digital transformation for large corporations and being able to help them realize help businesses realize what it is they want to achieve so be it the website the brand the look and feel the content the, the imagery all of that's got to really pull into the message and make sure that it connects with the customer that you want to connect with and then it also fulfills your brand values does that look like us you know are those fulfilling the experience principles that were created? You know, does, you know, when somebody opens it up for the split second you've got to make your first impression, are you connecting with that customer? I mean, you've been working, I presume, with many uh, companies, right? From startup to more mature companies. Where do you see they struggle? Let's talk about startup because this is where we are more focused. Where do you see startups struggling the most when it comes to acquiring and talking to customers? Um, I think it's hard to get known, first off, you know, to, to, um, to, to present uh, what, it, what you have. And then there's a pressure. There's a, there's a time pressure. There's a financial pressure to be able to, you know, go to market, to start generating profit. What needs to happen just at the kind of very start or just when you're beginning to think, okay, well, let's take this to the to the market. Understanding what it is you are or who it is you're talking to and what it is what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, because quite often a startup will put everything out there. They will, you know, say all of the things that it will do. I've worked with software companies and quite often they put every single feature that the piece of software will do rather than focusing on the solution that the software gives what is the problem that the software um solves what is the job that it does rather than what are all the features and functionality um and i think you know sometimes that can get sometimes that can get missed also startups will then be um 
you know, bombarded with the kind of, I guess, the reactive things. I need a website. I need some social media. I need a brand. And they'll get lots of individual people to help them do that. And sometimes it might be rushed. They also might invest in the wrong technology platform because they haven't necessarily worked out all of their functional requirements. They haven't got an idea, not just of what they need to do this week or this month, but what's the trajectory of the business. And if you have an idea of where you want to go, you've got more chance of leaving all of the the doors open to help you develop and help you invest your money in the right in the right way. So often people buy a piece of technology or invest in a platform or spend lots of money on on social media and it doesn't reap the rewards. It doesn't bring to them the 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 exposure they have, doesn't give them the the commercial um, return that they were wanting. And having an idea of that strategy and vision can really help businesses choose effectively what it is that they're going to do next. I mean, startups are not that well funded, at least the beginning. How they can cope in marketing in the right way when you have just very little money? Marketing is expensive. <laughs> it is, it is. And, and that's actually something that I, I, I'm passionate about solving. Um, these things don't need to be lengthy and I think that's that's where people lose an awful lot of money because there are lots of wonderful companies around that will say I'll do a social media strategy I'll do a marketing strategy I will build you a website I'll, I will do you know um, all of these other things that you can push forward but the business themselves hasn't sat back and go okay well what is it that we need what will actually have the biggest impact um, so they're not necessarily investing their money where they need. You know, you get a pressure saying, oh, you need Instagram, you need social, you need to be advertising on LinkedIn, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. And if you do everything, <laughs> you have no way of, you, you will spend an awful lot of money. Um, but what, what I can help businesses do is go, right, okay, I've got a much clearer idea. Let's try this. Let's try this and move forward. And I think also bringing into the process of, um, of designing and moving a company forward, um, a kind of sprint methodology is good. So when you, when you've decided, okay, this is the trajectory that we want to go on. What, what's the next thing we need to do? Let's do that. Let's invest properly on that. Let's measure the return. Let's talk to the customer, see how effective that was and then make a decision. So rather than investing something and then going for three months and not checking back with a customer, checking back on how effective that's been, um, if you're doing it continually, if this is the the fast iteration that you you build as part of your culture, you're more likely to be able to spend your money more effectively and build something that you um, your customers want to have. I know businesses are a little bit reticent about doing that. You know, have somebody like myself going, let's build some customer personas. Let's talk about the experience principles that you want to create for your business. They're going, actually, I'm not at that stage yet. Um, but from the companies that I've been working with, it's it's reaped an awful lot of um, rewards to be able to to do that. I think you know really positive things that have fed back is that you know Neil, especially in the early stages, really helped us see our business from a different perspective, and mm -hmm. we developed well because of that. I, I really distinguish be between marketing and communication. Yes. There are so many ways to do marketing, but doesn't mean you're communicating anything. So That's how they really can understand if they are communicating something to the customers or actually they're just spreading the words and reaching nothing. Measuring is obviously, you know, the you know, you can we can obviously get the analytics from Google, from etc. when you're you're putting out messaging, but then also asking the customer, you know, having that having that dialogue always be in conversation with them. Um, obviously, every business is different, um, whether you're bringing people through the door, whether you're doing online sales, whether it's about awareness and you've got a, a larger sale or, or you're trying to build relationships. So always asking for feedback, always responding to both the positives and the negatives. Um, there's no one answer, there's no one silver bullet, but I think having a conversational relationship with your customers is probably an overarching methodology that could be useful. You know, based on experience, uh, how, which are the main, the most effective way to market your business? Let's say from B2B and B2C. More, I know it's not, it's kind, we can't generalize so much, but based on experience, 
what exactly should be done to get out and communicate? Well, I, I feel actually I, I'd almost challenge the term marketing. Um, does, I think companies need to be designed from the heart in and how they express themselves and how they look and how they interact with their customers is all part of that experience. The design, the marketing, the messaging are all implementations of that big idea. I remember this wonderful um, uh, quote actually from, I think it was Kevin Gaskell from, uh, from Porsche. He said, we're not a car company, we're an experience company because they're not selling cars, they're selling the experiences that the cars bring. It's just like, oh my God, what do you mean that we're not a, we're not a car company? And I think it's, you know, it's important that people don't see design as a layer of decoration. If they, they need to design their processes, they need to design their customer journeys. And then you put, you know, so you would have a core customer journey, be it somebody would find you on the internet or somebody would buy a product from you. If you follow that customer journey and you look at where that customer could engage most effectively, where they would disengage, um, how you then bring them back. If you model your entire business design around that customer journey and then implement your experience principles, you know, how do I make it look like I want to look? How do I make sure that my brand is telling the story about myself that I want it to tell? Then I guess you don't really need to be, you know, marketing in the traditional sense. You are expressing yourself, your values and what you, you believe in your company. I mean, you say something very right and I really want to challenge you. <laughs> Tesla, in the, on the balance sheet, market is almost irrelevant. We are talking about some kind of maybe 100,000, nothing, zero. So Tesla is selling on mask image completely, 100%. Mm -hmm. tweeting and whatever it is how founders can read something soon sorry i didn't quite perhaps catch that how the founders can read something so we've been talking to founders every day you need to put your round is one million maybe 30 percent around will go to marketing okay and after you get a, a mask who almost spend no money at all <laughs> it's astonishing <laughs> how come this <laughs> Um, well, I, I think I think it, it's almost like how would you market the marketing because people always put it off. Oh, we can do that at the end. We can do that at the end, and that that is that is challenging because they almost see it. And I was having a conversation with somebody last week as decoration, you know. Be it I'm good for analogies, but it's almost like you bake the cake, which is your company, and now you've brought somebody in to do the icing, and that's not. That's not what design can offer your business. I think, you know, you pull back to, you know, even uh, my previous employers, McKinsey, they put out a wonderful report where they studied this, where they looked at the business value of design. And they have proven that companies that invest in having, um, you know, or looking at people designing their services, looking at designing their products and looking at the whole customer experience are up to 50% more successful. Um, so it's almost like, you know, rather than, you know, justifying it, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the businesses that are achieving and say, well, let's follow that model because they need, you know, we, we it, it's less opinion and it's more about, about facts nowadays that we, the, the businesses who invest in design are more successful. What do you mean when you say design, exactly? Design, yeah, no, it's a very broad term. <laughs> um, I think that overarches, you know, I mean, say a lot of the large corporations nowadays, they will have customer experience directors, you know, they will talk about CX. Um, so what is the experience of customers for our business? So that, that is, that is one element of it. Um, then there is the implementation. So the UX, you have service design. So if you have an online digital business, if you sell things, if you're, you know, utility company, software company, even the interface of a piece of software, all of that is the experience of your product. Or if you post things out to people, what kind of box does it come in? How do you do that? You know, what, what messages are inside that? All of those really wonderful companies that are doing those kind of things will have these smart messages. They will show that they believe in recycling. They would all of those kind of things. Every single touch point needs to 
if nothing else, instill the brand principles you believe in, but hopefully delight and surprise and take people further with um, with what it is that you're trying to communicate and the type of business that you need uh, to be. I mean, exactly talking about design, how important is the branding and understanding even the name of the company and logo? I, I think it's very important um, because you need to um, you need to you need, you need to have a presence and you need to build confidence. So just down from you know very basic, if you have a website, if you have a logo, um, there's a level of affirmation. Are you a well designed enough company? People will form an opinion of your business within a split second of seeing a piece of marketing, the first page of your website. And hopefully that's right. And hopefully that's spot on. But if it's not, and it's not quite what you want to say, then you've got to almost backtrack, go, no, no, wait, this is what we're about. This is what we're about. And that that's quite, that's quite difficult to do. Um, so I think, um, and then, but also I think businesses are quite often reactive and they, they look to lots of different brands and go, well, how do I mimic that brand? How do I build on what they've already achieved? Now, there is a level of competitor analysis um, that you need to do. But one thing I very passionately believe in is that your own brand identity should express yourself. It should tell your own story. Um, it should be the things that you care about. And it should, you know, so, I mean, I have lots of things in my own brand identity, which is always challenge being a designer going, how did you actually come up with your own brand? It's probably the toughest project any designer will ever have. <laughs> um, and every single element of what's in my brand is something that was important to me from my design history, from my design story. I used to be a racing cyclist, so the colours have actually come from from cycling because that's a part and part of my character, a part, part of my history. The logo is a typeface Gil Sands, which I studied at university, and it was one of those first moments where I really started to understand design. So the design business is 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 there. Um, and there's even elements from uh, my favorite football club and their typeface because I did some design from there. And it's all kind of pulled. It's all kind of, you know, telling my story. So when I look at it, I go, that's me. And and then I think it has more confidence. And I feel that any business, you know, that, that's, a you know, a silly, cut small story. But I think with any business, it needs to feel like an expression of what you need to achieve. If you look at it and go, I'm really proud. I want to show that. I believe in that. That's everything I want this to be it's going to be more successful. And it's the same as if the staff look at it and go, yeah, I believe in that. I've contributed to that. I've taken ownership of that. Your business will be more successful. We, we are saying, I mean, it's pretty common to say it's all about storytelling. Uh, what do you think? Yes, yes. Our businesses are stories. You know, I have a, I have a story, um, you know, you do, you do as well. And I think we bring you know, um, to that story, the passions, the experiences, the ambitions that we all have. Um, and, and then the business itself is telling a story, you know, as it goes through, it will grow, it will go through moments, it will bring on new people and that will bring character and culture to the, um, to the organization. And there will be phases of all of this. So yeah, storytelling is, is really important. And then if we've got the story right internally, then just telling that story to the customers um, and then inviting them into that story because it's their story as well. You know, your business belongs to them as, as much as they, you know, to you. I think there was an important stat actually around that saying uh, nearly 50% of customers will only buy or do business from businesses who they feel hold the same values that they do. Of course. And that's, that's important. Absolutely. Uh, I mean... Storytelling is absolutely right, but if I am a three month startup, it's complicated to write my story because I'm just starting to write it. How two founders can communicate communicating something when there is no story at all? It has to be all written. Um I have I have I have a little tool that's actually quite fun. And a lot of what I do is actually workshops and really really um, short workshops that, that that are really good to actually help pull that out of businesses so if i was to ask you know any business owner pick five words that would describe the experience you want to create with your business 
And if you can get as many people from the business in the room at the same time, that's brilliant. And then let's put them up on the wall. Okay, well, what do you mean by that? And how are we going to do that? And, you know, how do we communicate to that customers? And it's a really important, you know, conversation to have. It, of course, would be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and that then kind of goes, well, actually, you know, this is the story. But, you know, it's, it's like somebody like myself coming in and asking the right questions. I don't know what their business should look like. They would need to tell me or, you know, tell another creative. But the important thing of this is asking the right questions. Similarly to the fact that, you know, if you've got a business idea, you will have an idea of the market segment. You will have an idea of those customers. Um, but you kind of like need to put yourself in their shoes. And again, it's just a conversation. And I'm sure all the people involved in the business have lots of wonderful experiences about what goes through the world of a sales director or a doctor um, or, you know, a, a nurse or, you know, I was looking at your medical uh, pitches the other week. Um, how, you know, wh what kind of environment are they in? What are their stresses and how is your service tool product going to service them? Again, these are very short pieces to be able to do, but they help give that different perspective um, and then can build forwards pretty much on everything apart from the business. You know, you have to have the customer there. Yeah, what about the customer's storytelling? Because I'm giving, I'm expressing my story. I will tell you what actually I'm, I'm going to do. I've done what I've been through in my life, maybe, if I'm a, if I'm a founder, because there's not that much I can tell you about the business we just get started but what about the customers i'm reaching the what the customers themselves actually how do they tell their story yeah to... because i mean i do believe we talk to people as people are you can't talk to everyone the same way there is no way um I, I mean, I think I understand. So I think that, you know, the, the customer needs, needs to be able to... Let, let me be more specific. Many startups, I'm mean, going to talk about startups because we, a, a biz talk is done primarily for founders starting a business. Mm -hmm. They struggle to understand how to communicate because actually they don't know what their customers, they know maybe, but they do not understand them. Mm -hmm. If you don't know exactly how your customer think, you can't communicate to 20 years, uh, boy, guy, girl, whoever he is, and 50, 40, 60. And you can't communicate to European as you communicate to a Latin American. You need to know the story of this people. You do, you do. And this is where um, looking at your primary cust or persona groups really helps. Um, because a lot of businesses would say, well, well who, who is your market? And they would go, well, everybody. Um, but, <laughs> um, but that's not actually true. Um, if you kind of say, well, okay, well, who's going who's gonna to buy from you? Who's going to influence that purchase? Who's going to talk about you? Then also, I, I had this really in, a good piece of advice the other week about any new business is that if you try to be everything to everyone, you're not going to succeed. You need to find your niche to build your initial market inertia, and then you can build from there. So, you know, for me, maybe it's, you know, working with startups and entrepreneurs, you know, maybe that's, that's, that's my niche because I can, you know, do that, but I could position myself to work with large corporates or I could position myself to work with e-commerce, but maybe finding my niche is the important thing to build my own business. And I think that's the same for, for everybody, because once you get to a certain size, you can then go, OK, well, which markets are interesting? What opportunities have we discovered? I mean, that may find some people may find that limiting, but it also helps target your marketing and also reduces the spend. What's your how you can advise founders to get right when it comes to marketing? Uh, when it comes to strategy, how to approach the market, how to communicate to the market, how can, what would you actually recommend them? What you like? What can be your advice to them? You should actually move in this way. They are very young. They have no idea. They have, they got a very great idea. They have, but they need to understand how to move an idea to the market. It's so complicated. I mean, ideas 
I don't like to say idea cheap because I don't like to use this word, but you can come up with an idea, that's fine. Uh, but moving idea to concept, concept to business, that's another word, something completely different, very tiring, very difficult to achieve. I need to be so determined, but it's not enough. You need to know how to do. You need to know how to execute. Mm -hmm. And now when it comes to marketing, which means your go-to-market strategy, where be, be online, your go-to-market strategy is very much marketing and sales, more marketing and sales, uh, what actually you can recommend to them, advising them to do, how to move? I would move, it would it, be interesting for startups to know this, but I had come from helping very large corporations you know, multi-million, billion pound financial services, banks, UBS, Barclays, etc. And they wanted to be more agile, like the West Coast startups and be able to kind of, you know, really move that way. The processes that were developed to do that are rapid concept prototyping, are startups, are getting as many people as you can in the room from all different sectors of your business and having a conversation about who's the customer and then what is it you want to achieve and trying to actually get them to prototype these pieces themselves, you know, um, into kind of, you know, rapid concept prototypes, trying to turn around a prototype within, you know, a few days and seeing how that looks and putting it in people's hands and testing it um, and trying, you know, build that culture of test and learn, test and learn, small steps. We do this thing. We learn from it, we make a decision and we move on to the next. And I think you need the, the business themselves need to, to have a vision conversation of what we'd like to be, where we'd like to go. As you put on your notes, you know, what is your exit strategy? <laughs> um, uh, and then build a path towards that. So you have an idea with no boundaries whatsoever. What would you like to achieve? And then you go, right, okay, what's our first step towards that? Then once you've taken your first step, what do we know now, right? What's our second step? And just get that culture because of test and learn, test and learn, ask the customer. It's not rocket science, it really isn't, but it's just having the confidence to go, as long as you're moving forward and you've got a pretty good idea of where you want to go to, don't worry about not being where you need to be in a year, work out where you need to be next week. <laughs> 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 right. I mean, let me ask you, how different is marketing a product and marketing a service? I would probably challenge in, into a certain things that, that products have become services. Just in that, I think everything is surface, um, service design. There's no, there's no selling, guys, selling technology. <laughs> um, but... Um, I think, you know, selling, selling, you know, I guess something that comes in a box that you use or, or something like that. Um, obviously you need to market what the product is. You need to find out who it's for and, you know, how they're going to use it and, you know, market the sales of that end product. I guess a lot of startups, quite often they're digital businesses, aren't they? You know, they, they will be, you know, they, unless they're looking to sell to the massive, you know, distributors, they're looking to, you know, build a platform online and sell that way. Um, so they will need to build customer relationships. Um, how are customers using the product? What kind of feedback are they going to get? How do we get them to refer to? And looking at, I guess, the whole, you know, who are the target customers? How do we market to them? How does our product fit into their lives? And is it valuable? Brilliant. And then how do we make them aware of us? How do we get their interest? How do we get them to buy for us? And then how do we get them to feedback? How do we get them to tell people about us? All of these things are about onboarding, getting to know, making sure the customer's happy, learning from their experience and trying to make them advocates and ambassadors. And that's how businesses grow, but it's not just about acquisition. It's not just about sales. And this is, this is the one thing that can be very damaging for a business when they will just go, how many new customers have you got? <laughs> but I ask, well, how many repeat customers have you got? 
<laughs> because they're the ones that are going to build your business. Um, and, you know, quite often, you know, large corporations, they were completely driven by acquisition. They would reward their sales staff on acquisition, but nobody was rewarded about retention. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Absolutely true. Neil, where our founders can find you if they need you? Um, I, they can find me at, um, at the design business. That's the design dot business. Um, and obviously I'm, you know, um, on, on LinkedIn and et cetera there. Um, and you know, more than willing to have a conversation with anybody and, you know, hear their story and happy to give some initial advice and hopefully help them further on their journey. Neil, thank you very much for coming to this talk. It's been a very good pleasure for me. Thank you very much, Max. Me too. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.